How in the hell did you let this get this bad? How in the hell did you let this get this bad? I cannot believe that. Hello, this video is sponsored by myself and my clothing brand, Alien Clothing. That's A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N. We just released a lot of really cool stuff, including the shirt that I really love. Go over there and see if you like anything. The fantastic, <clears throat> oh my God. Today, we are taking a look at the Fantastic Beasts movies, and I'm so excited because they are very bad. <laughs> Not completely terrible, there's some redeeming qualities here and there, mostly in the first one, but we'll get into that. Witches, live among us. If you haven't seen my huge video on all the Harry Potter movies, you should watch that first and then come back to this one. I spent a lot of time on that video and I think it's pretty good. So the first movie, they were all directed by David Yates and they were written by J.K. Rowling. And I think most of the problems with these movies has to do with the writing, kind of ironic coming from a very famous writer. Maybe she should stick to writing novels instead of movies, but hey, here we are. Right away, this movie tries to hook you in with the nostalgia. John Williams did not score this movie, but they sprinkle these Harry Potter songs all throughout these movies. She's in season. She needs to mate. All I can do is think about Harry Potter. Granted, it's cool to revisit this universe, but this story is not Harry's story. So it's just kind of odd to make me think about Harry's story when it's completely different. I do like the protagonist Newt Scamander. He's played by Eddie Redmayne, and I think he did a great job. I really like the idea of him. First off, if you didn't know, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was originally this very small book. It was basically just a small encyclopedia of fantastical beasts. And these movies are about the person who wrote that book. At least they're supposed to be about him. They're all over the place though. Like he's in them and he's a big part of some of them. But for a lot of these movies, they kind of forget that Newt exists. Basically, he's a wizard that's obsessed with magical creatures. He learned everything about them. He wants to save and preserve them because apparently the rest of the magical world couldn't give less of a shit about them. I guess Newt is the first wizard to go out and try and learn everything he can about these creatures and record it. That's one of his big missions to write this book about magical creatures so the rest of the wizarding world aren't ignorant to the way they function in the world and their temperaments and everything else like an extermination guide no a guide to help people understand why we should protecting these creatures instead of killing them. But I'm guessing there's a bunch of books already about these creatures. How is it possible that Newt is the first person to give a shit about them, to record stuff about them? It's just weird, right? Like there should be a lot of people out there that devote their lives to these magical creatures, but I guess not. Like, I guess Newt is the only one. He then made the acquaintance of Newt's command at the world's foremost and albeit only magizoologist. Anyway, one of the cool things about this character is that he carries around a zoo. Basically, in his suitcase, he has a magical suitcase that he can go inside of and it's massive in there. And this is where he keeps all of his magical creatures. It's a place where he can keep them safe, but also learn more about them and transport them from one place to another without the muggles learning about them or what he's doing. So I think that premise is pretty neat. The creativity used in this movie to show us about these creatures is really cool. The first one we learn about is called a Niffler. It's basically just a platypus that's obsessed with shiny things and it will go out of its way to find shiny things and jam them into its pouch. I guess its pouch is magical and it has like an endless bottom because there are many instances where Newt is shown emptying the Niffler like he's shaking it and a bunch of shit is flying out of this Niffler's pouch. So that's kind of weird having a pouch with no bottom. Yeah, I think it would have been kind of neat if they used that in this movie. Newt could like use his pouch to hide something. I don't know, but they don't do that. Newt spends a lot of time trying to catch this Niffler. The Niffler is a pain in the ass and it tries to run away constantly. For some reason, Newt doesn't just use the spell Accio on it. He does do that, but not nearly as much as he should. He could save himself a lot of trouble if he just used that spell. I know some of the time he's like within the muggle world and so he can't use spells, but he just does anyway. So why didn't he just use Accio? Accio Niffler. Accio Niffler. Accio! Also, his briefcase sucks for some reason, and the latches keep popping up, so... Maybe he should use magic to, I don't know, make sure his suitcase doesn't open randomly. He has magic to make this briefcase into this massive zoo, but not to make it so secure and the creatures can't escape because the Niffler seems to just crawl out of it very easily. That's kind of an issue, Newt. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's also kind of silly to me that the Niffler tries to escape this guy's briefcase when it's already massive inside there. And he keeps the Nifflers in this area with a bunch of shiny stuff, you know, to keep them preoccupied. But I guess that wasn't enough for this particular Niffler who desperately wants to get all the shiny stuff outside of the briefcase because maybe it already collected all the stuff inside the briefcase. <laughs> I gotta be honest, if there's one magical creature I'd want to have, it would be a Niffler. You know how useful a Niffler would be? Just toss it outside and it comes back with like a million dollars in jewels every single day. It's the most valuable creature in existence. <laughs> Newt has a muggle-worthy switch on his briefcase, and when he clicks it, it makes it so when you open the briefcase, muggles don't see anything odd inside. It just looks like a regular briefcase. But he only decides to flip this switch right when he's about to get searched. Like, if you're walking around the muggle world, always have this switch on, you know? Be safe. <laughs> Newt is very haphazard with his magic in these movies. You'll see that as I continue. Newt is traveling to the USA to introduce a massive bird Frank to its natural habitat in Arizona. But Newt gets in trouble with the USA Magical Ministry, or the Makuza. Magical Congress of the United States of America? So you work for Makuza? Kind of weird, like you know, Yakuza, but in this case, it's the Makuza. There's no similarities there, but they just sound similar. Just weird. <laughs> Newt is caught by Tina for performing magic in front of a nomadge. A nomadge is basically the American version of Muggle, but they get confused by this when they're talking to each other. Do American wizards not know the British slang for Muggles? And vice versa, like do they not ever communicate? What? Sorry, we call them Muggles. Also, Newt lies to Tina and gives her a random excuse as to why he's there. What are you doing in New York anyway? I came to my birthday present that there's only one breeder of Appaloosa Puffskins in the world and he lives in New York. We don't allow the breeding of magical creatures in New York. We closed that guy down a year ago. And what are you doing in New York? I came to buy an apple as a pasquin, sir. Is it illegal to release this big bird in Arizona? They don't tell us this, but I'm assuming it is. I don't know if you need like a magical license to do this or what, but for some reason, Newt lies. So, cool. There's a comical relief character who's also a muggle named Kowalski. Hi. Jacob Kowalski. Yeah, it's a pretty awful name. It's not memorable at all. And the only reason I know this is because I've been doing so much research on these movies. I'm pretty sure if you go up to any random person who has seen these movies on the street and you're like, hey, name the funny muggle from the Fantastic Beast movies. They won't be able to do that. <laughs> Call me Jacob. Didn't ask, don't care, plus <laughs> you're white. This guy is a failing businessman in New York, and his briefcase gets swapped with newts. Sorry. And there's also a part when Newt mistakenly leaves an egg, like a magical beast egg on a bench next to Jacob. And Jacob's like, dude, you forgot your egg. <laughs> like, why was this egg just... Oh my God. Anyway, why does Newt suck so much at keeping his beasts inside of this briefcase? This magical briefcase, it should be easy to keep things inside there. Sorry, Grandma. So remember that bald, evil zombie woman from The Walking Dead? She's also from the movie Minority Report. Yeah, well, she's in this movie and she plays an evil woman. Basically, she runs an orphanage and she hates wizards. Good news, everybody. Ezra Miller is in this movie and his haircut looks worse than his toenail in this one image. Ezra Miller is basically himself in this movie. He causes a bunch of destruction. He's a walking storm, basically, and he zooms around the city destroying shit. Yeah, so Ezra Miller just plays Ezra Miller. <laughs> Tina has a weird ditzy sister named Queenie, and when they introduce Jacob to her, she's instantly obsessed with him. She's also a Legilimens. I think I said that right. You're a Legilimens. 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 Mm, yeah, but I always have trouble with your kind. Brits. It's the accent. Well, I'll tell you what, you fat little bruh. Basically, this means that she can read minds. Maybe she read Jacob's mind and she was like, hell yeah, this guy thinks I'm hot. This is sick. Let's do this. And he's very exotic, because I've never been with a muggle before. <laughs> 
Most guys think what he was thinking first time they see me. Okay, so there are people out there that just have this ability to read other people's minds. Now, if these people exist, wouldn't they be used in the ministry as gatekeepers to powerful positions so they know someone's intent and their biases and everything else? And imagine all the torment that they could have been saved at Hogwarts if they just had someone like Queenie interview all the teachers before they hired them. Why didn't they use one on Voldemort when he's an obviously troubled child. Where are all these legilimens? Legilimens? Why do they have to name shit so annoying in these movies? Legilimens. Legilimens. A legilimens. Yeah. A lot of the fun in this movie is watching Jacob's reaction to being exposed to the wizarding world for the first time. Although there are some instances where he seems a little bit too casual for my liking. Personally, if I was exposed to the shit that he was exposed to, I would be losing my mind. But I guess Jacob's a simpleton that doesn't question anything around him. He's just like, wow, look at all this magic shit. It's so cool. Whoa. Colin Farrell is in this movie and he plays Mr. Graves, who ends up becoming Grindelwald, who is played by Johnny Depp for a total of like two minutes in the entire movie. <laughs> So Mr. Graves is using Ezra Miller in order to try and find the Obscurial. And Obscurial is like this super powerful force that's within a wizard, usually a child. There's no documented case of an Obscurial surviving past the age of 10. And Graves believes that this child is in the orphanage where Ezra Miller lives. Ezra Miller plays a character named Credence Barebone. When in reality, Credence is the Obscurial. But for whatever reason, Grindelwald doesn't know this. Like, how does someone as powerful as Grindelwald not know that he's face to face with the Obscurial? Like... I know they're not Jedi and they can't like force sense someone, but still. Also, if he so desperately wants this Obscurial, why didn't he just, I don't know, infiltrate the orphanage himself and just find them? He's powerful enough. Maybe he's afraid of it or something? Which is weird because there's a scene of this random wizard blocking everything that Credence throws at him with like a bubble shield. And I'm pretty sure Grindelwald can do that same thing. So yeah, I don't know. There's a scene when Newt invites Jacob into his briefcase and he immediately pranks him by throwing this bird creature at him. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? That's so cruel. This guy has no idea about anything in the wizarding world, and you're immediately trying to, like, harass him. It's so weird. Probably shouldn't let him loose in here, though. And like I said before, Kowalski is acting way too calm. The creativity they use when it comes to these magical creatures is the highlight of this movie, in my opinion. There's this Lovecraftian-looking bull thing. <laughs> There's a puffer fish lion. There's a cute old man sloth that can see the immediate future. <laughs> There's a serpent bird that grows to fill available space. And then his little stick bug companion that Newt uses to unlock doors. <laughs> All that stuff I found really cool. It's just everything else not a huge fan of. We get more scenes of Newt struggling to find his Niffler who ran away from him, but then Newt finally uses the spell Accio on it when he could have done that earlier, but like we need a super drawn out fun scene of him hanging on to a chandelier and shit. There's a part when Newt is trying to communicate with a glowing nutsack head rhino. Yeah, this rhino has like this big glowing nutsack on its face and it's really big. It's a massive rhino a big glowing nutsack rhino and newt is being really weird trying to communicate with it and it's pretty funny imagine them filming this part because i bet it's pretty hilarious come over and you slam that down so you turn that around <laughs> he's finally able to get the rhino into his case he just like sticks the case onto the rhino and just like suctions the rhino down into it where did it go though when you go down to his case, it leads to the small little workshop area, and the rhino would not fit here. Maybe the briefcase just like magically creates a spot for them when it sucks them in? I mean, it's magic, so. So Mr. Graves sentences Newt and Tina to death. I guess Tina was working outside of her jurisdiction, and they blame Newt for the obscurial attacks, so they sentence them to death. Kind of a harsh punishment, although obviously it's Grindelwald doing this, but there's some wizards behind him. I know maybe they don't have a say, but this leads me to ask, can the American wizardry court subject a British wizard to death? Wouldn't they need to talk to the British ministry before they just lay a death charge on someone? <laughs> There's a funny scene when Kowalski drinks some giggle juice and he scream laughs and it's pretty funny. <laughs> 
Ha <laughs> ha. So they meet with a gangster goblin who might have some information about the Obscurial. All this goblin's fingers are bent backwards, and it's really disturbing. I love how Ron Perlman just makes this random scene in this movie as a, like, a random goblin gangster. <laughs> Credence is an older, very powerful Obscurial. I guess being an Obscurial kills you normally when you're a child, but not this kid. He's like the super version, you know? Don't mess with him. At the end of this movie, Newt tries to save Credence, but he's unable to. The American Ministry end up destroying him. They lay into him with spells. They just disintegrate him, which is kind of hilarious because he's not dead. He's, he's not, not dead. dead. Anyway, I'll... Okay, Newt helps apprehend Grindelwald by using one of his creatures on him. Would have been cool if they showed Grindelwald as more of a threat in this movie, aside from just newspaper clippings and this one scene in the beginning. Aside from that, it's just like, here's Grindelwald. Where is he? No one knows. Here's Mr. Graves, another mean guy. I wonder who's Grindelwald. <laughs> There's a part at the end of this movie when Grindelwald is doing this like lightning spell over and over on Newt. He's basically just doing the whole Palpatine force lightning thing. I know these evil guys love slow deaths, like they're really into people dying slowly, but maybe you're in kind of a hurry right now, Grindelwald. Just use Avara Kedavra on this dude. Be done with it. Why are you wasting so much time? <laughs> so yeah, throughout this movie, a bunch of muggles see a bunch of wizarding shit, like buildings just explode out of nowhere, but it's okay because Newt has the answer. Remember Frank, his big bird that he's transporting to, I don't know, the desert somewhere? Well, this bird has the ability to obliviate a ton of people in a wide area. And it does this by using the rain. Somehow it's working on the muggles indoors too. It's just magic shit. It works. Of course, the ministry forces them to obliviate Jacob as well. And why it doesn't do anything to the wizards, who knows? They're just wizards and it only works on muggles. But it doesn't work on Kowalski until he walks into the rain, when it should have worked on him immediately, like it did on all the other muggles who were sitting inside. Whatever, who cares? The wizards walk through the streets and fix everything with their wands, blah, 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 it's all good. You know, move you over. <laughs> Newt drops off a bunch of very valuable eggshells for Jacob. And Jacob finds the briefcase and he's like, okay, wow, cool, a bunch of eggshells. And there's a note there and it's like, hey dude, these are very valuable eggshells. Use them to open your bakery. And Jacob's like, wow, that's random. Nice, I will do just that. <laughs> He doesn't question anything about this. He's just like, hell yeah, that's a nice Samaritan who just has these very valuable eggs for some reason. And who did he sell these eggs to? Like what kind of bank is buying these eggs? But yeah, forget about that. He opens his bakery and he makes a bunch of pastries of the creatures he's met throughout the movie. Even though he had his memory wiped, he does say in the next movie that it only wiped his bad memories, but he kept all of his good memories. That's why I worked on all the muggles. Oh my God, it's so convoluted and just like a stupid excuse to get away with some dumb bullshit. I hate it. Ah. Uh. So his memories of Queenie weren't erased, I guess. Even though when he had his memory erased, when Queenie was standing right in front of him, it looked like his memory of her was being wiped. But when he sees her in his bake shop, it's like, oh, I recognize you. Oh my God. Also, throughout the movie, they show us this guy. He explicitly wants magic to be real. He brought Credence's family to a meeting with the newspaper publisher, and he was ecstatic when the magic bubble appeared above the metro station near the end of the movie. So his memories, by this logic, shouldn't have been erased because they only erase bad memories, and he loves magic. But in his case, that means absolutely nothing. This character holds zero plot significance and never appears in later movies. It also doesn't make a lot of sense for Jake Jacob because a lot of his memories in regards to the wizarding world are all positive. He made friends, he fell in love, he was awestruck by a bunch of amazing creatures. This meal, it's insanely good. I'm a, I'm a cook and, and this is like the greatest meal I've ever had in my life. I'm just saying Jacob's memory would not be impacted that much. Like sure he might not remember the rhino part or witnessing any of the destruction, but he would definitely know that the wizarding world still exists. This movie wasn't entirely sure what it wanted to be. It was a bunch of mini beast rescue missions with one very deadly obscurial rescue mission with a Grindelwald cherry on top. So yeah, that's fantastic beasts and where to find them. My favorite of the trilogies. And clearly I had a lot of issues with it. So, <laughs> but I did like a lot of it too. I think Newt is a really cool character. I think it's ingenious to make a comical relief character a muggle who's being introduced to all this weird shit. I don't think the Grindelwald twist worked very well at all. The obscurial thing, whatever. Moving on to movie two. 
The second movie in the series is called Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Oh look guys, it's Gellert the Gamer Grindelwald. <laughs> Grindelwald is played by Johnny Depp, and unlike the first movie, he gets more than two minutes of screen time in this one, so that's pretty cool. In the beginning, he's locked up in prison, and for some reason, they decided to lock him up with his pet. Yeah, he has a little pet, and it's named Antonio, okay? I know this movie is called Fantastic Beasts, but that doesn't mean you need to put random beasts everywhere just to, like, justify the name Fantastic Beasts. They smuggle poor Antonio into a guy's case. He opens the case and Antonio attacks this guy, only for Grindelwald to throw Antonio to his death. <laughs> So needy. Yeah, he just randomly tosses the poor gremlin creature to his death. Like, why? It doesn't make any sense. Like, oh, wow, Grindelwald, he's really mean. What the f- why? Why would you do that? Why even put this creature in the movie if you're just gonna kill him right away? Just seems like a weird decision. So the way they broke Grindelwald out of prison is that he had one of his followers drink Polyjuice Potion and they swapped places. And so when they went to go transport Grindelwald from one prison to another, they used that as a perfect opportunity to break him out. The whole point of this sequence is to show that Grindelwald is escaping prison and in the process stealing back this blood pack charm. But as you can clearly see, before they flew off in the buggy, this is Grindelwald, this guy. I know he doesn't look like Grindelwald, but it's him. And he has the blood pack charm. He gives it away, only to steal it back a couple of minutes later. <laughs> It makes no sense. So what's so important about this thing? It's a blood pact that he made with Dumbledore. Basically, they fell in love when they were younger, and they promised each other that they would never fight. And they were so certain that they would never fight each other that they made this blood pact charm. Like, what the hell? That's not how relationships work, dude. <laughs> If you're in a serious relationship with anybody, you're never going to agree with them 100% of the time, all the time. You're going to fight with them, eventually. Oh. Oh. Like if Grindelwald and Dumbledore got married and they had a dispute over who did the laundry, would this blood pack charm just like attack one of them? Or is it very specific? They have to want to kill the other person. They can fight as long as they don't want to kill the other person, right? Is that how it works? I'm guessing that's how it works because in any other way, it would be very stupid. It's a betrayal in my heart. Also, for Grindelwald to have swapped places with this random guy, then one of them would have had to have found a way past that force field thing that's preventing Grindelwald from doing anything. It kills a fly in the very beginning of the movie. Also, apparently they removed Grindelwald's tongue because he was too persuasive with the guards in previous prisons. So you're telling me there's no spell to make it so he can't speak? You can't just like sew his lips up with a spell or something? She's horrible. <laughs> Also, it's hilarious that they have to transport him using this buggy that flies when there are so many other convenient ways for the wizarding people to teleport places. With like flu powder, they can apparate. Do something else, you know? That would be much easier and much safer. Like what the hell? Why do they have to go in this carriage thing? And guess what guys? Credence survived. Remember when he got obliterated by all those wizards in the previous movie? Well, he's alive somehow. Sorry, you're talking about Credence as if he was still here. He survived, Newt. It just reminds me of that one Star Wars line from episode 9 when Poe's like, Somehow the Emperor returned! Somehow Palpatine returned. I unfortunately have to diagnose you with cringe. We don't know how, it just happened. <laughs> yeah guys, Credence is alive still. I don't know. <laughs> And he's part of a magical circus now. Don't ask me how this happened. His body reformed somewhere. Like the particles of his body reformed and he joined a circus. And he has this girlfriend now who's a snake woman. She can like turn to a snake. These movies are so good at introducing us to characters that I just don't give a fuck about. It's like the polar opposite of Harry Potter. In Harry Potter, you pretty much care about every character. Even the goofy side characters like Filch are funny and endearing in their own way. In Fantastic Beasts, it's the polar opposite. They introduce a shit ton of characters, but I don't care about any of them. Like Newt is pretty cool, and Jacob is funny sometimes. Grindelwald is basically just a bland Voldemort. Help us, Dumbledore. If I asked you now to kill him for me, would you do it for me, Crawl? Yes. And yeah, there's Dumbledore. He's pretty cool, only because I liked him in the Harry Potter series. 
but yeah, it's pretty bad. So Dumbledore leads Newt to a rooftop so he can speak to him in private. It's very important that none of the muggles see Dumbledore, even though he's dressed like a muggle and nobody would even bat an eye at him, you know, like what the hell? Maybe he's hiding from other wizards, but they're in London. This is a muggle city, so I don't know why he needs to hide. So Dumbledore casts a spell to make London all cloudy, which is strange because that's like the default weather there. Oh yes, just look at this British weather. Have a look at that. Such clear, beautiful skies. Some sheep over there. <laughs> And he does this so they can talk on street level and walk around. Why he couldn't just talk to Newt on the roof beats me. We then meet Newt's brother Theseus. He works as an Auror for the Ministry. Then there's a scene of Newt riding a seaweed dragon and we meet his super horny assistant, Bunty. She's coming on to Newt very hard. Perhaps you should take off your shirt. And he decides to get wet with his seaweed dragon instead. So there you go. Jacob is here and his memory loss meant nothing apparently. Yeah, JK just wrote it out. It's like, it never happened. I guess because the memory loss only impacts bad memories, which is obviously just some dumb bullshit so they could include Jacob in this movie easily without, you know, doing something else. <laughs> but you said it. The potion only erases bad memories. Don't get me wrong, I had some weird ones and I had some scary ones, but uh... Like, why couldn't you just do something simpler like, oh, I'm just gonna use a spell to give you your memories back. Like, it could have been that easy. <gasps> Like, just have Queenie do that. Have Queenie cast a spell on him to give him his memories back. It's that simple. Don't include some bullshit like, oh, it only impacts bad memories. Like, come on, dude. It's messy as it is. And this is a magical world. You can write yourself out of this shit so easily. Jacob is engaged to the creepiest woman on earth because instead of allowing him to make his own choices, she decides to bewitch Jacob. So he's under her control entirely. And she can just have a nice life with him because he's basically just a puppet that she can control. Pretty fucking up. Blah, blah, blah. Newt obviously thinks this is messed up, so he removes the enchantment. When Jacob returns to his normal self, he doesn't even care that this woman just took over his life. Wait, what? If it were me, I would leave this woman immediately, even if I was in love with her at one point. But no, he's just simping hard for her still, and he's like, oh, I love you, Queenie. You shouldn't have done that. Everything's fine. Come on, man. This is a Bruh. huge red flag, okay? This woman is not good news. And why you would want to be with a woman that could read your mind in the first place, man, that's just asking for trouble, isn't it? I even miss the stuff that drove me nuts, like the mind reading. I mean, yeah, she's, she's cuckoo. Like, this woman's a psycho. Anyway, so Tina is on a mission to find Credence for some reason. They never really explain it in the movies, so she just happens to be in Paris. Convenient. Grindelwald also wants Credence to help him kill Dumbledore because he can't do it on his own because of the blood pact. Credence is this super powerful obscurial, and Grindelwald knows that he's the only person that could kill Dumbledore for him. Grindelwald has the ability to see into the future with this skull hookah thing. Why he didn't use it to see what would happen to him in the first film, you know, with him getting arrested and everything, I'm not sure. They don't exactly let us know the limitations of his ability. So Newt's on a side mission to find Tina, and Jacob tags along to find Queenie. I'm gonna go see my sister. Fine, see your sister. Fine. No. I guess Newt is still in love with Tina. I mean, there was some mild flirting here and there, but I guess he's head over heels for her. There's a part when Newt licks a sidewalk to find a clue. And we're licking the dirt now. He's a weird dude. He uses this fancy spell to see where people were walking at a circus that happened the other night, the same one that Credence escaped from. There were so many people here. It would take forever for him to find the correct footsteps, but he does it like immediately. It's weird. Credence and his girlfriend get ambushed by a wizard who is hired by Grindelwald to capture Credence. And this wizard just uses a bubble spell when Credence attacks him. It just deflects everything. That's a pretty handy spell, dude. I'm surprised people haven't been using it throughout the entire series. Why didn't Grindelwald use it at the end of the last movie when he was being attacked by a bunch of wizards. Could have easily just walked out of there with the bubble. Like, put the bubble on and then apparate out of there. Very easy way to leave. A bunch of muggles 
Wallace watched Newt capture a giant Chinese magical beast in his suitcase, but he doesn't bother erasing their memories. Wouldn't that mean Newt needs to be arrested again? There are so many moments in these movies where people are blatantly using magic in front of muggles. It's constant. Buildings being destroyed, massive things coming out of nowhere, magical beasts being sucked into suitcases. All this crazy shit is happening, but I guess it would be kind of inconvenient and really annoying for him to whip out his big eagle every two seconds to have him erase everybody's memory. <laughs> the nostalgia machine is working overtime in this movie. They want to remind you that this is a Harry Potter movie. They're prodding you nonstop. Hey, remember? This is in the Harry Potter universe. I bet you forgot. Well, here's some reminders. Want to listen to some tunes? They bring us to Hogwarts, and when they do this, it's accompanied by Harry Potter music. Young Dumbledore is there teaching students. The Ministry visits Hogwarts, and they ask Dumbledore to fight Grindelwald, and he refuses, but he doesn't tell them about the Blood Pact. And in return, they put on these magical handcuffs on him, so they know every spell that he casts. At this point, the Ministry is not aware of the Blood Pact. The Ministry couldn't be sure whether or not Dumbledore was working with Grindelwald. The best part is that he would have never had these handcuffs put on him if he was just open and honest with the Ministry in the first place. When they created this blood pact, Grindelwald wasn't magical Hitler yet. In fact, keeping this information a secret from the Ministry only further incriminates Dumbledore. Really? It would be kind of helpful to give them that information. Maybe they would be able to help you destroy this blood pact thing? I don't know, but he just decides to leave them in the dark. So yeah, it's weird. It's a mystery. There's some pretty interesting flashback scenes of Newt and Lita Lestrange at Hogwarts. Also, McGonagall is in this movie, which is hilarious because during this time, McGonagall canonically was not born yet. Not at all, Dolores. Merely your medieval methods. Something you'd like to say, dear? Oh, there are several things I would like to say. How much pussy does this motherfucker get? We read zero pussy, man. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's impressive, JK. More like just kidding, Rowling. Am I right? She's horrible. <laughs> There's this guy named Yusuf Kama, and he seeks revenge for something that happened to him long ago. So he wants to kill Credence because he thinks that he's someone else. He captures Tina and Newt, and then he immediately passes out. Newt, with the help of his stick bug, are able to escape the prison very easily. They find out that Yusuf Kama has been infected by some parasite from a water dragon or something, and Newt has to save him because Newt is the only person that knows what this thing is in his eyeball. It's a very ham-fisted problem for Kama to have, and for Newt to solve. It feels like they just put this in the movie to give Newt something to do with his, you know, experience. Calamari. It's so weird. Like, it has nothing to do with the overarching plot. It's just some random problem that Yusuf Kama has that Newt helps him with. It's like, cool, nice. Maybe it makes Kama like him more, but like, it's so dumb. Grindelwald meets Queenie, and he convinces her to join his side. Of course she does, because she's a psycho woman. So Grindelwald needs to gather all of his followers, and he does this by covering an entire city in like black sheets. Yes, the stupidity is ramping up. This is not normal, but if I looked out my window and I saw these massive black sheets covering all the buildings in my area, I wouldn't be like, normal, this happens all the time. How the hell does the muggle world not know that the wizarding world exists at this point? You know, like so much weird shit happens. Another name that you might recognize from Harry Potter is Nicholas Flamel. What that dog is guarding is strictly between Professor Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Philosopher's Stone. What? Yes, he's in this. He's an immortal alchemist and he has a magic crystal ball that they use in this movie. This could be used in many helpful ways. Like, I don't know, finding Credence and informing Dumbledore where he is, but they don't do that because that would be too easy easy, you know? They gotta complicate things. I like how in this movie Newt's face is plastered on most wanted posters everywhere. He's not this crazy criminal that's killed a bunch of people, you know? He violated a travel restriction. It's like, okay, why is he on these most wanted posters? <laughs> Tina and Newt are faced with these evil cats, and they're guarding this place that Tina and Newt are infiltrating to find more information. But they don't attack unless they're attacked first. Newt says this. They won't hurt you unless you attack them. 
Oops. Imagine if a bunch of evil wizards came in here with their wands. These cats would just sit there and snarl at them and do nothing until these evil wizards attack them. So, I mean, they're not very effective, are they? They go very deep with family history in this movie. A bunch of stuff about Lita Lestrange and her awful father Corvus Lestrange and her brother Corvus Lestrange. It all seems pointless and meandering. It has nothing to do with Newt and everything to do with Credence and use of comma. The best part is that this entire scene, when they're sitting there explaining all this backstory and bullshit it takes forever like this guy did this to this person and so yusuf wants revenge and lita lestrange swapped a baby when she was really young and one of the babies ended up dying and apparently that was her brother corvus it's a huge convoluted mess they explain all of this stuff and at the end it doesn't matter credence isn't corvus yusuf comma thought credence was corvus and he went on this big mission to try and kill him when he wanted revenge on lita's father who isn't even around anymore more. So why is he going through all this effort? And the best part is he waited so long to do this. Like what the hell? Do you know who Credence really is? No. Oh my god. At the end of it all, Credence isn't even Corvus. Apparently, he's a Dumbledore. His name's Aurelius Dumbledore. There is a legend in your family that a phoenix will come to any member. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Oh my god. This movie takes the viewer and spins them in circles nonstop, explaining all this random shit about these characters that you don't care about anyway, especially when Credence was supposed to be dead in the first movie. <laughs> Only for them to bamboozle you at the very end and be like, Hey, Credence isn't actually Corvus. He's a Dumbledore. It's so fucking random. <laughs> Oh my god, this movie should be about Newt's commander. I care about Newt's commander. He's cool and interesting and unique. I don't give a fuck about Credence or Corvus or Aurelius Dumbledore or whatever the f I don't care about him. You killed him already, but he's back now and he has this huge, important- Oh my god. So at the end of this movie, Grindelwald has this long Hitler speech about how the Wizarding World is better than Muggles. There are auras here among us. Credence and Queenie are seduced by Grindelwald and they join his side. Lita sacrifices herself mindlessly at the end. She just kind of like shoots Grindelwald with a spell when he has all this blue flame around him. She does manage to destroy the skull thing that Grindelwald uses to like see into the future. So her sacrifice kind of served a purpose, but it still feels like they were just trying to find an excuse to get rid of her. I hate Paris. So Grindelwald creates this massive blue flame and it turns into a dragon and shit and apparently it's going to devour all of Paris. So Nicholas Flamel and all the good wizards need to make a circle of red flame to try and stop it. And they're successful. At the end of this movie, the Niffler steals the blood pack charm while Grindelwald is distracted. I mean, it like crawls over his leg and shit. I'm pretty sure he would feel that, but whatever. It steals the blood pack charm and it brings it to Newt. Newt talks to Dumbledore at the end and he says that he knows that they swore not to fight each other. It's a blood pack, isn't it? You swore not to fight each other. But how does he know that? Seems like it was just a good guess. At first, I thought Grindelwald might be lying about Credence being a Dumbledore, but it's confirmed in the next movie. So yeah, that's the crimes of Grindelwald. Yeah, I mean, his biggest crime being covering the city in black sheets. Um, that was pretty inconvenient, you know. On to movie three. Movie three, The Secrets of Dumbledore. You and Grindelwald were as close as brothers. Oh, we were closer than brothers. I do like dick though. Yeah, so this one's fun. It's centered around politics. Snore. It's all about Grindelwald trying to work his way up as the president of the wizarding world because he wants to destroy all muggles. Because that hasn't happened before. We haven't had an evil lord that wanted to destroy all muggles. Wait a minute. I think someone like that existed. Except this one has an interesting, like, eye, you know? Keeps changing, right? Like, that's kind of cool. He was Colin Farrell at one point, and then he was Johnny Depp, and now he's Mads Mikkelsen. Who will he be next? Who will he 
he be next? Jack Black? Who knows? Could be. So yeah, Aurelius or Credence or Corvus or whoever the f Ezra Miller is, he comes out of nowhere and he kills Newt's magical dragon deer thing or the chillin' and they snatch up a baby and bring it to Grindelwald. Apparently when a chillin' is born, a righteous leader will rise up and lead the new world or some bullshit. They're supposed to change the world forever because they choose the leader, you know? A chillin' knows everything. They know best. So basically you line up a bunch of powerful people, you put a chillin' on the ground and and it walks over to the person who was meant to lead or like the best leader out of the bunch. And if it bows to them, then they're elected, you know? So yeah, there's no voting in the wizarding world. It all comes down to a random baby deer dragon thing and it just goes around and bows to people. There's no way that anybody could use this to their advantage. Oh wait, Grindelwald does that exact thing in this movie. I got to admit, I really like Mads Mikkelsen in a villain role. I thought he was very good in Hannibal and he's good here. I like him a lot more than Johnny Depp who was more of like a Tim Burton type of evil villain. But yeah, I like Mads Mikkelsen a lot as Grindelwald and they should have used him from the beginning. So yeah, Grindelwald has this ability to see into the future. He's a seer, I guess. And he amplifies this ability by having his goons go out and kill a mama chillin and steal the baby away. I guess the babies are more valuable. So that's where Newt comes in because obviously he cares about these chillins and he wants to protect them, which is kind Kind of a cool way to give Newt some agency in the story. So Grindelwald kills the baby chillin and apparently that amplifies his ability to see into the future. Not sure how that works, but this is the Harry Potter universe, so it just works. You're kidding me. Just magic bullshit, you know? These movies are full of it. If he was a seer before, I guess he just wasn't very good at it because all of his plans just kept on getting foiled. But hey, here we are. I hate Paris. So Newt and friends have to find a way to confuse Grindelwald by coming up with a bunch of different plans. So he's not entirely sure which one is the right one. But this isn't very good for the audience because when you're trying to confuse a character in the movie and also not telling us what the real plan is, you're just stringing along the audience and they can't get invested in anything because they don't feel like any progress is being made. It's just a bad way to write a movie. This might have worked in a book. It doesn't work very well for a movie. We get to learn a little bit more about the blood pack charm thing. So the way the blood pack charm kills you, it uses the chain that like wraps around you. It's implied that it's trying to kill Dumbledore. I'm not sure what else it'd be doing. And this is just for thinking about turning against Grindelwald. And then the charm hits the wall for some reason. I guess it flies toward Grindelwald. I'm not sure. Like what's going on here? Grindelwald asked Credence to kill Dumbledore. Isn't that breaking the pact? You know, like asking someone else to do the thing that you're not supposed to do isn't that breaking the path like you're thinking about killing this guy just not doing it yourself isn't that betraying each other i guess that doesn't count apparently the wizarding world needs jacob because he's pure of heart or something and so they need him to fight against grindelwald it makes no sense <laughs> what a waste of money like, you're a good dude, and you know about the Wizarding World, so we're here to, like, bring you back so you can help us fight against a wizard? Like, what? Seems to me you're just the kind of average Joe the world needs right now. We need you, Mr. Kowalski. Granted, Queenie is working with Grindelwald, so maybe that could be a reason why they would want Jacob's help. But aside from that, it doesn't make much sense that they would need him. I guess being a good guy is enough to fight a dark lord. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever justifies jamming this character into the story when he has no place in it. Because we desperately need that comic relief. There's this scene of Professor Hicks, who's this random wizard lady, tricking Jacob to come outside so she can talk to him and convince him to come back to the wizarding world. I guess Newt convinced Hicks to get Jacob to come back. That's the real reason they want him to come back, because Newt wants some friends around. Spinning! Always with the spinning, Jacob. Welcome, you brilliant man. <laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of people on this train. These are the heroes. Kama, Bunty, Professor Hicks, Jacob, Newt, and Newt's brother Theseus. <sighs> I don't give a shit about these characters. Like the movie doesn't even care to give any of them any depth. None of them have any stakes in the story. There's nothing specific that any of these characters want to achieve. They have no depth. They're just like cogs in a machine. Professor Hicks accent and speech patterns are so awkward and unnatural. She sounds like this. Yes, I am a professor. Can't you tell I'm from the wizarding world? Fantastic Beasts is required reading for all my fifth years. Whoopsie. 
frag, sometimes I forget my own strength. I'll take it from here. Thank you. A little over a year ago, in the hopes of securing oh a small God. business. Not that either of you asked, but I would highly recommend learning charms. <clears throat> me, 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 me. <clears throat> Don't care. Plus, didn't ask. Theseus is in this movie just so he can get captured and give Newt something to do. Yeah, there's a part when Newt has to save his brother. Other than that, Theseus is just a throwaway character, which is sad because, you know, he's the main character's brother. I mean, Newt should be the main character, right? But he doesn't feel like the main character in his own story. Newt was a big player in the original movie. It felt like they didn't really know what to do with him in the subsequent films. Professor Hicks has this one cool scene where she, like, does some magic during this political, like, dinner party. But for the most part, they're just like non-characters, like NPCs in a video game. Is that even fair? Like, I'm sure some NPCs in video games have more depth than these characters. <laughs> like, yeah, Kama had that big thing in the original movie, but I don't even know why he's in this next one. They just threw him in here. There's this one bamboozle scene where like, yeah, he joined Grindelwald and then he like betrays Grindelwald's forces and like joins the good guys. And that was supposed to be like a big scene, you know, like, oh my God, he's a good guy. But it had no impact on me. I didn't care at all. I was like, okay. It would have been much better if Newt's brother was convinced somehow that Newt was a bad guy and that muggles were actually evil because that would have more of an impact on Newt and Newt's the main character and I care about Newt. Seeing Theseus's redemption story would be much more impactful than this random character who only had significance in a previous movie. They try the whole giggle shot gag again Remember when Jacob takes a drink and he laughs really loud? Yeah, they do that again. Cool. <laughs> I think they're running out of ideas to make people laugh. Remember Bunty, Newt's assistant? Perhaps you should take off your shirt. She's in this one. And remember how they have to confuse Grindelwald? Well, she has six replicas made of Newt's briefcase. Because guess what, guys? The baby chillin'? There was a twin baby chillin' that Grindelwald didn't know about until later in the movie. Grindelwald took the original chillin', killed it, and revived it, and bewitched it. So it would choose him on election day. Obviously, this second chillin' might be a problem for him. So Grindelwald wants to capture this second chillin'. They do this thing where they hide the chillin' in a briefcase. They tell Newt that it's in the briefcase that he's holding, but it's obviously not in his briefcase. They just tell him that, so Grindelwald will see that. And then later it's like, oh my god, it's not actually in his case, obviously. <laughs> Remember when I told you about the part when Newt had to save his brother from prison? It goes on for quite a while. And this prison is pretty insane. There's a massive hole in the center, and there's this big scorpion bug thing that just kills the prisoners randomly. And in order for you not to be killed by this thing, you have to carry this lantern around. It's weird. And there's a bunch of like baby scorpion bugs around, and Newt knows that he has to like dance in a certain way so they won't attack him. And instead, they will also dance and just follow him around. And it's pretty hilarious. They basically just do a Fortnite dance together. Like they're literally doing the crab meme. You know the crab meme? The don't 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 I don't know how it goes. But. So there's this big dinner party with all the politicians. Professor Hicks makes it appear like Jacob does this tornado spell in the middle of this dinner party. Like he's an assassin or something. And none of the wizards try and stop him. Instead, they just kind of flee and wait for other wizards to come in and stop him. And I guess Hicks was totally cool with Jacob taking the fall for this, even though like some of these wizards know that this Jacob guy is a muggle. So wouldn't they be very confused that he's performing magic? <laughs> also, Grindelwald tried to assassinate the other politicians in the room by like spiking their drink with a spell or something. And Professor Hicks saves them at the last second. JK just wants this to be this cool heroic moment for Professor Hicks, but it doesn't make much sense for Grindelwald to do this. Why the hell would he want to assassinate the other politicians when the chillin is already a surefire way for him to win the election? I feel like this assassination would only jeopardize his ability to win more than anything. After this dinner party scene, there's newspapers around that say, murderous muggle. I guess it's not weird to anybody that a muggle is performing magic? Dumbledore gave this fake wand to Jacob earlier in the movie. It's like, hell yeah, Jacob, take this stick that you can't use so you can, you know, fit in with the cool kids. So there's a part when Grindelwald erases a memory from Kama's mind to make him more loyal to his cause, which obviously didn't work because he turns on him later. But he didn't think to erase Jacob from Queenie's mind when that could easily complicate her loyalty to him. Or perhaps he used her to bring Jacob to him? 
him? Oh my god. Because he uses Jacob at the end of the movie as an example for the Wizarding World to see how awful muggles are. Like, look at this muggle. He tried to kill me or whatever. And then Grindelwald uses the Crucio curse on him. So we finally have a reason for Jacob being in this movie. It was for him to get tortured by Grindelwald in front of all these wizards. <laughs> Credence is sick of being used by Grindelwald. So during this election day, he tells the crowd of wizards the truth about the chillin' being dead and bewitched. Bunty was the one carrying the duplicate case with the chillin' inside it. The second chillin' comes out and it chooses Dumbledore. And Dumbledore's like, uh, hell no, bro. I'm not doing it. So the chillin's like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll choose this other candidate, Santos, because she's a really nice lady. Because I guess Santos was supposed to be the vote for its dead twin. My money's on Santos. Grindy and Dumby have this little mind battle because Grindelwald thinks this is a great opportunity to kill Credence in front of everybody. But Dumbledore shoots a spell that collides with Grindelwald's death spell in order to save Credence. Apparently this blood pact was destroyed because Grindelwald seeked to kill someone and Dumbledore was just defending somebody. They weren't trying to kill each other and that breaks the blood pact and they show this by having them fight. But I don't understand how they were able to fight before the blood pact was destroyed. They're doing it in like like their mind or something. Like I thought the whole point of the blood pact was so this wouldn't take place. And it doesn't make any sense that that's how it would destroy the blood pact. Who will love you now, Dumbledore? Say I was about to bully someone and I made an oath to not fight with someone else. But that person defends this person that I'm about to bully. And so I fight with the person I'm not supposed to fight with. Like that's a fight, you know? <laughs> make it make sense. Seek to defend someone other than yourself versus seek to kill someone and their spells meeting. Wouldn't that be considered fighting? Why does that destroy the blood pact? What? I also want to mention that Bunty's smile looks like a creepy clown smile. Nothing against her. It's just perhaps you should take off your shirt. I'm not Down. suggesting anymore. Tina is hardly in this one, which is very strange because she's the love interest for the protagonist. <laughs> She's barely in it. Jacob and Queenie get married at the end because Jacob loves insane women. She's cuckoo. And they get married in his pastry shop. Weird place to hold it. But hey, you do you. I know it's like sentimental and whatever, but it's kind of cramped. Overall, these movies are very messy. They're all over the place with a bunch of characters that mean nothing. I just wish they would have laser focused on Newt and kept the series about Newt. I would have been fine with Grindelwald being this big baddie if it was mostly Newt who defeated him. You know how in most movies, there's a third act structure. You know, it's kind of like an arc, it builds tension, this big thing happens, oh my God, maybe there's like another one at the end and then it ends. In this movie, it's just like squiggles. Oh my God, this guy's doing this. Oh my God, my brother's captured. Gotta go save him. Oh no, I'm gonna put this stuff in briefcases. What's happening with this briefcase? Oh no, I don't know what's happening. Oh my God, where's Credence? Credence is who? Oh, I don't know who's Credence. Blah! Oh, remember Newt? Yeah, he's the main character. Oh, Newt's gonna save him. Oh my God, no, no. Newt doesn't do anything at the end. Wow, that's weird. And it's, oh, Dumbledore. Everything's about Dumbledore now because we love Dumbledore. Oh no, now it's Dumbledore versus Grindelwald. Oh my God, I wish Newt was doing something. Whoa, and now the movie's over. That sucked. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody who supports this channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to all my patrons that make videos like this possible. Time to apparate. Wait, where's my wand? Do you guys get it? I ended the video with the color yellow because Newt's a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs are yellow. <laughs> I do like that. I like that Newt's a Hufflepuff. I like Newt, you know? I like the flashbacks with Newt. I think he's a cool, interesting character. He's kind of awkward and weird, but he loves his creatures, and the creatures are really interesting and unique. I just wish the series was more about him. Anyway, the first one, while it had some flaws, you know, I thought was cute for the most part. The next two are just awful, and I'm going to remove the memory of them from my brain. <laughs> Yeah. The world is right again. If you liked any of the clothes I wore throughout this video, you can find them at AlienClothing.com, my personal clothing brand. That's A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N Clothing.com. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!